Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm gonna to react to candies that are banned in America that can kill. I mean, from the top of my head, the only one I can guess that will be on this list is the Kinder Surprise and the version where the toy is actually inside the, uh, the Kinder Egg. But other than that, I can't imagine what other candies are capable of killing people. I mean, I, what, what, like, how? Like, maybe there's some really bad ingredient or something like that. So yeah, this should be fascinating. So let's do it. 10 banned candies that can kill. Number 10, Hippy Sippy. The 60s were a more experimental time, and that's probably the only explanation for how a product like Hippy Sippy ever made it onto shelves. What? Imported candy hit as income inducement to narcotics use. The sweet treat consisted of multicolored chocolate balls that were contained within a vial, and to get to them, you had to suck through the needle. The similarities to drug use weren't accidental, but were in fact the whole point of this candy. What? It was designed to replicate hippie drug culture, with the needle and syringe being associated with heroin use, and the wow. colored balls representing uppers and downers. To make things even worse, each hippie sippy came with a button that had slogans such as, Hippie Sippy says I'll try anything, and we sell happiness. <laughs> Yeah, they definitely tried to capitalize on the, uh, you know, on the narcotic trend for sure. Needless to say, scents prevailed and the products were pulled from the shelves less than a year after being released. Making drug use feel fun to children clearly risks them moving on to harder candies later in life. Harder so this candy. could have potentially been one of the most dangerous products to ever have been developed. For sure. Oh my Number God. nine, Kinder Eggs and Wonder Balls. Ah. The only way I chocolate could be made any better for kids is if it includes a plastic toy to play with once all the sugary goodness is gone. And that's exactly what Kinder Eggs and Wonder Balls tried to offer. The Kinder version is available around the world, and each one contains a plastic egg that contains a collectible toy to assemble. But for a long time, they've been banned in the U.S. It's all because of a law that was introduced in the 1930s that strictly prohibited non-nutritive objects from being embedded within any type of food. Mm. The concern was that some people wouldn't be aware there's something in the treat that can't be eaten. And but I mean, if the manufacturer makes it abundantly clear that there is a toy inside the egg, you know, maybe they put a, a, on the package, they put like an illustration. I mean, it's, it's fairly obvious, isn't it? it would therefore pose a serious choking hazard. While this may seem like overzealous lawmaking, yeah. the concerns aren't completely unfounded. In 2016, a three-year-old girl in France died after choking on a toy in a Kinder Egg. Oh and there God. have been a number of instances elsewhere where injuries have happened because of swallowing the plastic figurines. Oh my goodness. Despite repeated attempts to finally bring the candies to the US, it looks as if the ban is here to stay. Although I've heard that there is an alternative Kinder, kinder Egg where the toy is outside the egg that's available Number in the eight, US. Toxic Waste Chew Bar. Toxic Waste Candy has become popular recently because of its extreme sourness. But there was one product in the range, the Toxic Waste Nuclear Sludge Chew Bar, that was banned in 2011. It had been originally launched in 2000. Is this the, is this the same company that makes the Warhead? Like, I tried one in a video, like, about three months ago, and the sourness of that thing, I could, I could not keep it in my mouth for more than three seconds. It was so sour. 2007, but there were serious concerns about the ingredients that were used to make the candy. Not, as you might suspect, in regards to how they made it so sour, but more as a result of where and how they were produced. The company's factory was in Pakistan, and following tests, the FDA revealed that they had detected significant levels of lead within the chew bars. What? To a level that could be potentially harmful to small children, infants, and pregnant women. Regulations require lead levels to be below 0.1 parts per million, and the bars were found to have at least three times this limit. Candy Dynamics, the company that sells the toxic waste range of candies, complied with the recall. The bars were removed from stores, and instead of reworking the recipe, they gave up on that particular candy for good. Imagine getting lead poisoning from, from a candy. <laughs> Her face is cracking me. <laughs> the 
Before we move on, be sure to subscribe to Top 5s with notifications on. Number 7. Roadkill Gummy Candy There are countless different versions of gummy candy available in stores, and in 2004, Kraft thought they had come up with an idea that would help them stand out among the rest. Roadkill-themed gummy candies. Each one was in the shape of chickens, squirrels, and snakes with tire tracks on them. But what was intended to be a tongue-in-cheek joke soon began to cause problems. They ended production of the treats the following year after a series of campaigns by animal rights activists who claimed they trivialized the idea of injuring animals. What? Through fears that the product sent a message to children that it was okay to harm animals, Kraft was forced to relent and rethink their strategy. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. So is it just because the, the gummy candies are shaped like animals? Is that the connection? I mean, that, that seems like a bit of a stretch. Number six, Lucas Mexican Candy. Candy from South America is one of the most in-demand products around the world, but a company called Lucas began targeting their products at children, and it was controversial from the beginning. Known as Lucas Mexican Candy, the powdered candy was sold in a shaker container that children would use to shake it into their mouths. Others were seen shaking the powder onto a table, arranging it into a line, and then sniffing it, which oh, immediately worried people what? about the similarity with drug use. Oh, wow. Lucas claimed that this was the result of using the product wrong and that it was designed to be lightly sprinkled on fruit to make it taste better. But they should have known that kids would find a less healthy way of consuming it. Wow, so people were snorting it. <laughs> I've just I've just visualized somebody snorting a line of, of, of this stuff. The company's undoing in the end wasn't because they were teaching children how to partake in adult candy though, but because of what their products contained. Tests showed that it had more than twice the allowed levels of lead and was so immediately banned by regulators. Why lead? Why is lead being found in all these candies? Is, is it a part of the manufacturing process that they use? Because this is twice now. Number five, Haribo sugar-free gummy bears. What? These Haribo are is one of the world's most popular candy brands, but despite making plenty of products that kids and grown-ups love, they haven't always gotten things right. In 2014, their sugar-free gummy bears gained attention because of some rather unfortunate side effects that were experienced oh, yeah. by people who ate them in large quantities. <laughs> the reason for this was the replacement of the sugar used in normal recipes with lycosin, a substance that's almost as sweet as sugar, but contains half the calories. Its main ingredient is malitol, which is a sugar alcohol. But our bodies can't fully digest it, and if it's present in high enough quantities, it can start to ferment in the stomach. Because of this, the Amazon reviews were rather detailed, with some- Whoa! Diarrhea while driving! <laughs> oh my god! I'm calling it napalm and saying that it caused intestinal distress and reminiscent of trumpets calling demons back to hell. <laughs> Number four. Ex Hold on, that review. That review. Hold on a minute. Let me find that. I have been sitting on my toilet for five hours in excruciating pain. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would purchase again. <laughs> Tastes amazing, but hurts like none other. <laughs> oh my God. You know what you're getting yourself into at this point. It's all real, very real. <laughs> Number four. Exploding gum. Oh, man. Candy companies are always coming up with new varieties of tried and tested favorites. But there is such a thing as going too far. A Ukrainian chemistry student learned this to his cost in 2009 after supercharging his bubble gum with tragic results. What? He liked to increase the sour taste of his favorite brand, so he would often dip it into citric acid before chewing. Oh, On this God. occasion, however, he used the wrong powder and instead dipped it in explosives. All it oh. took was one chew and his gum exploded his <gasps> jaw, and most of the lower part of his face were blown clean off. What? And he died soon after. Oh, my God. Needless to say, this particular recipe for gum won't be making its way onto shelves anytime soon. Whoa. Number three, free candy. 
you might think that the best kind of candy is free candy. But in Madrid, Spain, the traditions of giving any sweet treats for free has actually been banned. On the 5th of January each year, towns across the country hold a Christmas parade called Cabagata de Reyes, which sees three wise men greeting children before handing out gifts. The men are taken through the streets to a church in a carriage, and part of the tradition involves throwing candy from the carriage into the crowds. It has, however, led to a number of injuries as children scramble to collect what they can. And in 2013, a six-year-old boy in Malaga was killed when he went into the street to collect some candy oh, and was no. hit by the carriage. Oh, no. Rules are now in place to prevent such a tragedy from ever happening again. Oh, my and God. children in the region will have to resort to getting their candy the same way as the rest of us, by pestering their parents until they relent. That's, that's terrible. That poor kid. <sighs> Number two, lollipipe. Even though lollipipes were never intended to be sold to children, their availability in a wide range of flavors meant that it was inevitable that kids would get their hands on them, and this posed a real problem. Made from candy, these pipes were designed for smoking certain substances through, and one of their marketing claims was that they were flame-proof, so could be used time and time again. They became really popular with smokers, but they were believed to encourage children to try out what they were designed for, and this resulted in a significant increase in drug use by underage people. Yep. The pipe was banned from sale in every 7-Eleven store in Indiana following complaints by parent groups, and they are now very difficult to get a hold of in physical stores. Wow, I bet like uh, I bet these pipes are probably worth a lot now to anyone that's got them in stock. Yeah, I bet they are. But those who really want one, having to rely on purchasing them online. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I really want to lick it. Oh. Number one, candy cigarettes. <laughs> candy cigarettes first began to be sold in the late 1800s and were made from sugar, gum, or chocolate that was wrapped in a paper in a pack that resembled a box of cigarettes. Some varieties even included powdered sugar that you could blow through the candy stick to simulate smoke. They began to be seen as a way to desensitize children to the idea of smoking, however. And yeah. for a time, cigarette manufacturers even helped. Imagine this product being released today. Imagine that. It would never be released. <laughs> with the production of the candy and allowed their branding to be used on packets. As medical organizations began to become more aware of the dangers of smoking, these collaborations became less common, and the products have now been banned in virtually every country around the world, apart from the US and Canada. Studies have shown that a surprising percentage of smokers had candy cigarettes when they were younger compared to people who don't smoke. Oh, so the link between the two has been proved to be significant. There is a connection. What seems like an innocent children's treat is probably responsible for the most deaths of any candy ever, and it's no surprise that very few places now allow them to be sold. Wow. Wow. Subscribe to Top. Wow, man. Some of those candies I'd never heard of, but the, the, the one, the Mexican one, the one that was like a powder that people would like make lines out of and snort. I mean, come on. <laughs> Just absolutely crazy the things people will do. And uh, that last one, the, uh, the, the the cigarette one, I mean, yeah, it just, uh, just they made me laugh because, you know, it just shows how far times have changed, you know. Imagine these products released today. They would never see the light of day. They'd be quickly rejected by all major department stores. But yeah, really, really interesting video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.